Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Today I want to talk about how to conserve energy. This is going to be a tag along video to the other videos that I've done on the dyspnea cycle because this is kind of the final part of that. Um, it's just putting everything together that you've learned so far and um, just making it count in your day to day activities. So Unless you are an athlete, you probably haven't thought a lot about energy as far as the foods that you eat and the fuel it makes so that you have energy during the day to get through your activities. So um, athletes, of course, do it. They keep track of everything they eat according to what kind of exercising or training plan they're on. And so it does make sense that um, even if you are not an athlete, you may want to pay attention to this. And this is especially true if you have a chronic illness or and or you have breathing problems. So this is why. I know I've talked to you a little bit about the fact that when you are struggling to breathe, you're using more energy and you're using more oxygen than if you're just sitting and you're not having any trouble at all. So basically, if you have chronic breathing problems, you will tire out faster than someone who does not doing the exact same thing, okay? Now, where this becomes really difficult for most people that I talk to is that you are somebody that you were used to just go, 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 go. You used to be so productive. Now you have a harder time getting little activities done because of your breathing. It's completely normal, completely normal. Um, and the, the biggest thing for me is just to tell you that you need to just have a little bit of grace for yourself in these situations because it's, it's not anything really that you can do other than these breathing exercises, of course, but it's going to help if you make things a little bit easier on yourself, okay? So a couple different ways to approach this. I recommend at the beginning of every week, making a list of activities, things that you need to get done, but you break them up into three different, three different um, lists, okay? So you're gonna have the things you have to get done. This is something, you know, absolutely you have to get it done this week. You're gonna put in one spot. The second spot, you're going to put in things that you need to get done, but isn't an absolute have to. And then in the other list, you're going to put down things you would like to do if you have time or energy. So once you have all those things down, then you need to think about your activities for the week, what you already have going on. Then you want to try to plug in those activities around that stuff. So most people will have a certain time of day that they breathe better than um, the other parts of the day. So if you're one of those people, you want to try to put the harder tasks around that time period where you know you have the most energy. Now, um, once you kind of get that lined out, I know it never really works the way you put it down, but this is going to help you. It's going to take away some anxiety um, and it's just going to space things out a little bit and make things easier for you to do. Now, the first thing that I suggest that nobody really likes at first is asking for help. So if you have some tasks on there that you know really need to be done and you know the perfect person that could help you do them, contact them and ask for help. So I don't know, this could be a son, a daughter, a parent, um, a sibling, or your next door neighbor. I know, you know, we have that relationship with our neighbors. Um, every now and then we'll do stuff for each other and it's not often, but the important thing is that if you have something that you need to get done and there is someone that you know could help, it doesn't hurt at all to ask them. Um, believe it or not, people want to help you, um, especially if they've noticed that you're just having a harder time doing things, but they don't know how to help. So um, it never hurts just to reach out and ask for help. Now, on top of that, the next thing is that you want to start working smarter, not harder, to get your tasks done. What I mean by this is you want to make the tasks as easy on yourself as you can. So let's say you're washing the dishes. If you have a stool that you could pull up to the sink 
sit down and wash the dishes. When you're doing laundry, if you can bring the laundry basket next to you on a couch, rather than reaching up for hangers, reaching down on the floor for different piles, try to put everything out in front of you. For whatever reason, reaching up and reaching down seems to be hard on a lot of people and it takes a lot more energy. So speaking of that, when, um, when you're putting away groceries, toiletries, different things like that, try to make everything that you use often close to level with you so that you're not doing a lot of climbing, reaching, and bending down. So that right there is going to help you a lot. Um, a couple of other pointers that I've just learned throughout the years. Um, when you go grocery shopping, if there's a cart that you can ride in, by all means, use the cart. You're going to feel so much better at the end of your shopping trip if you're riding in a cart rather than walking through the store. If you don't have carts at your store, make sure that you get a shopping cart or a buggy so that you can kind of lean on it and take some um, pressure off of your muscles. That's going to help. Also, um, when you take a shower, a lot of people have a hard time with all the um, all of the hot air and the, the um, mist and everything from the shower. Some people, it makes their breathing easier. Some people, it makes it worse. So. Um, always want to use your bathroom fan. Even showering with the door open um, is going to help a lot with that. Now, when you get out of the shower, instead of reaching up, drying your hair, bending down, drying your body, put on a bathrobe. Do that. It's going to help you so much. Um, it's just really going to take a lot of um, hassle, I guess, out of getting ready. Just throw that on. Um, and that's, that's really going to help if you're not having to dry off every inch of your body. So, um, one good thing is that you can, if you have a support group that you're already in, this is like the best question to ask because anytime in one of my groups, I ask, can you give me some pointers on things that you all do to make life easier on yourself? People come up with all kinds of stuff that I would have never thought of. So, um, if you're involved in any groups like that, throw that out there and just see what people have because you will learn different ways of doing things and it's, it's honestly just going to make your day-to-day -day activities so much easier. Um, now, when it, also with the conserving energy, when you are doing a difficult task, you want to try to make sure that you're using your diaphragmatic breathing and your pursed breathing. Big, big, big on the exhale because if you're doing something that is strenuous, you want to make sure that you're exhaling during that part, like if you're lifting something heavy. So for instance, say there is a box on the floor, you have to get it. You're going to breathe in through your nose first while you're standing up. Then you're going to bend down and exhale as you pick it up. It's going to help with that task. So that is just some right off the top of my head. Uh, I just want to thank you for watching today's video. If you found the information helpful and you want to learn more, I want to invite you to join our breathing coaching program. It's absolutely free. Um, with that, you'll have access to live sessions with me and a team of respiratory therapists. We're going to go over crucial topics, um, different things to make your life easier, stuff that people have questions about. And you're just going to kind of be involved in this little community where you can give other people encouragement, you can receive encouragement when you need it. Um, just a really cool place. So if you want to take the next step in your respiratory health, just sign up with us for the Breathe Coaching Program, and I look forward to working with you.